Okay, start. Drupal superstars versus players. I'm uh, Alex Burrows, um, or hashtag A Burrows on Twitter. Who am I? I just said who I am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Drupal developer, consultant, and themer. I've been working with Drupal since 2009. I'm joint director, I'm not technical director of Online Perspectives Limited. We offer white label Drupal development. I enjoy a nice beer, I'll say. I was going to put a picture from last night up there. Um, I'm active in the Drupal community, contributing to um, COD, um, patches, etc. I'm a Drupal Camp London organiser. That's uh, 28th of uh, February to the 2nd of March. Drupal is PHP, as we all know. Um, but with Drupal players, they think that Drupal is just PHP and that's all it is. Um, but as the, many of you know, there's um, a way Drupal is done. We've got the, you know, we've got the arrays, we've got the pre-process, hooks, um, all the hooks in general, um, but if we were to give this to a player, they just go at it and hack it apart and kill the site. Um, but so is WordPress, and WordPress is a good example of um, a hacked together CMS, as um, if you want to extend WordPress, you have to hack it, unlike Drupal. And so is Joomla. So why can't I treat it like PHP? Hacking call and contrib. Drupal players um, all care about how quick they can get it done. Um, they don't care about the quality of the code or how secure it is. Um, they just want to get the project done. So they'll hack whatever they have to in order to get it done, which then upsets us Drupal superstars who uh, are trying to get on the project in a an approach that we can all work with, with um, using Git repositories um, and not hacking core or contrib. So what is a player? <laughs> <laughs> this was in the other room, someone showed me this. So. <laughs> How a player works Drupal. As pretty much everyone here has probably seen, PHP in blocks, nodes, views, anywhere PHP shouldn't go in <coughs> Drupal is where the player will put the code, um, which is then a nightmare when you're trying to do multiple, um, you've got multiple developers working on the project and you're trying to deploy the code, um, but it's all in the database and then it just causes havoc for everyone and it can cause corruptions in the database which can cause us a lot of headaches. PHP shouldn't be in the Drupal backend at all, it should all be in code, um, mainly for our sanity um, and the fact that SQL injections can happen from it. Um, and the point of PHP being in code is when we get to the code, we just want to know, it's either in the theme or it's in the module, we don't want to faff around going through all the views looking in blocks anywhere that there's a PHP filter, which has been removed in Drupal 8, um, is PHP code that's vulnerable and can also kind of let the client touch because um, they do a lot of PHP code to link to the theme, to link to the where um, many of the file storages items are. And they tend to um, allow clients tend to have access to this and then when they edit it it miraculously breaks hard coding TPL files so a good example of this is um, someone doesn't understand the Drupal is a CMS they just think it's a flat HTML site and every single page is a TPL with nothing editable it's just all HTML and then when the client wants to edit it via Drupal they can't because it's all hard coded 
the point of Drupal is to allow the client to be able to manage their content um, and not have it come back to us as a developer to change the way it's set out and add new functionality in, um, which can be really basic, but if it's more complicated, then obviously we'll have to work on it. They've never heard of panels or display suites. Um, another example is on the project recently, um, every single page was in the, as a node. They hard-coded blocks into the node TPL files, view embeds. Um, there was a structure that you couldn't tell the way the fields in the node were rendering, which then caused a lot of havoc. And then when they did um, modify items via a block, it then caused havoc in the node TPL files and so forth. Use embed view and no TPL files. Um, it can be it's okay to use it for a small amount, but when every other line is a view embed view, it's not not a really good uh, place to be. Adding jQuery library to page TPL or PHP or another TPL, so they don't understand that jQuery is in Drupal core by default. So they believe they can just add jQuery in or just script tags in general into the um, TPL files so they can get what they want but then causes havoc through the admin interface and other um, Drupal um, elements. SQL queries in TPL files, blocks, nodes and views. SQL queries should only be in a module um, mainly because a front end guy doesn't want to see a lot of SQL queries and the best place for it to be is in a module because you're kind of splitting the two apart. So front end, as it will be in Drupal 8, front end is just for your twig and your um, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, where back end is all in your modules. So here's an example from Toyota. That, um, Basically, as you can see, this is in template.php and we've got a lot of conditions and a lot of SQL queries that shouldn't be here, um, but they were there. And it slows the site down as well because it's rendering the front end after the, um, the back end. So really it should be in a module um, called via another function. Or because it's in a pre-processed page, you can just do it in the module itself. So what is a superstar? So in Drupal we've got um, four aspects of um, skill sets. You've got a FEMA, you've got a developer, you've got a site architect and a site builder. Superstar FEMAs, they should know the template files inside out, they should know how the naming conventions of the um, TPLs work. Um, based upon different node types, um, different IDs from node IDs and different views. They should know JavaScript and that it works off behavior. Um, a lot of people use uh, jQuery document ready when we've already got behaviors that helps us as developers as well to reference the um, elements of that JavaScript array. Template.php should know how the pre-process hooks work. This is all PHP, but um, it's only basic PHP, to be honest. SAS, less or CSS. Um, point of Drupal is to decrease time it's spent building the site. So by using SAS, less, SAS or less, um, you're saving a lot of time because you're reusing elements in a quick, concise approach. Superstar developer. They know hooks, database and express thing, Drupal.js, dot ink, dot info, dot module, preprocess, DB queries, Drupal CSS, and they also know a lot more. <laughs> a superstar architect is. Um, Basically, they tend to be ex-Drupal developers. They have a great knowledge of how Drupal modules work. 
um, and how they can work together. So they know which modules will do what the client wants, basically. They know that they can make the client's dreams become a reality, and that's what Facebook in a day. <laughs> they know how to integrate contrib with custom modules and custom hooks. Superstar Site Builder. They should know views and context, display suite, panels, organic groups, views, features. Features is a uh, sort of subject, but um, <laughs> so views, context panels, display suite, organic groups is made to make our lives a lot easier in the way we build sites. Um, before I started Drupal, I remember working on a custom CMS, and to do something as simple as creating a news item via um, a node type and then displaying it, it took a couple of weeks because the CMS was rubbish. In Drupal, we can do this in, out of the box, and especially out of Drupal 8, you can do it straight out of the box. So the point is not to reinvent the wheel and use what we've got in Drupal Contrib. Uh, features, on the other hand, is the whole you know, ball game. Um, so where do you find Drupal Superstar? This room. <laughs> Issue queues. Word of mouth. <coughs> Drupal IRC. Normally, hashtag group for UK got the best ones in. <laughs> Pub and social events. Twitter. Go get them. And now for something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> Rescue projects. So I had a rant on Twitter um, it was last week about working on rescue projects. Um, as a development agency, we tend not to take on rescue projects because it's a whole ball lake in the retrospect of you're working with someone else's code and nine times out of ten, you're rescuing it because the code's crap. So when we take on a rescue project now, we tend to investigate it first but bill them for the investigation and then we go, two choices, the red choice, you're starting it from scratch because it's shit code. You're going into the code and you're you're just like, what the fuck? What what's this doing? Why is this doing it? You know, you're just confused. It's <coughs> it's completely gonna waste your time and if the client wants you to work on the project later on, you need to have it in a way that you know that you as a Drupal developer understands it and that you know other Drupal developers will be able to understand it. Um, if you want, if the client doesn't want that, then you've got the blue choice. <laughs> you continue on. <coughs> a lot of painful, stressful days ahead. A lot more money for you, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Awesome. What's the worst <laughs> rescue project you've had? Worst? This site was, it was called the My Spanish Learning Pad and every single page was um, its own TPL file which had all the, every single bit of code was just hard coded into it so the client thought they were editing it but they actually weren't, they are making no difference um, and then it was doing it had every single function was, there's like 200 functions they created that was pretty much the same as what Drupal books would do. So they re, and it was just a mess and stressful. So which book did they make? Uh, I think we just got rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think we quickly fixed what we could and uh, got, yeah. Um, but then I worked on one recently which they were just, um, it was that sort of India, and um, my experience with offshore development, especially India and Pakistan, is it's really bad. But then you've got some really good guys out there. Um, I know Cap Gemini, for instance, they outsource a lot of their work to India, and they've got some really guy, guru guys out there. We ride shore it. Ride shore it. <laughs> ride shore it. What's that? Like offshore it. Right, the right way. Yeah. Uh, um, and it was basically 
It's so confusing. I use it. Field collections is a module that I hate with a passion because um, it's just horrible. And you can do, you can achieve a lot of what you want in field collection, either create new custom fields or use um, inline entity field. That's quite a great approach. Um, and they were just doing no TPLs with views and beds, and then they were calling up functions, and they were calling up the nodes inside those no TPLs, and it was, yeah, it was all over the place. Um, and they wanted it responsive. Um, that ain't gonna happen, not the way it was done. Um, they were dumping blocks left, right, and center. They had PHP and different um, block fields. The client could edit whatever they wanted, which then broke the site, and so, yeah, we've had a, few fair fun games. Anyone else had any interesting rescue projects? I got a belter last year for an insurance company, a really major insurance company, where uh, they got us to do some training, and the, their developers, again in India, have discovered the theme, that if you create theme functions, you can generate a template file from that, and then they just put a WordPress style PHP code <laughs> in all the templates. So they generated <laughs> zillions of theme files, template file for all of them, and then just wrote all the logic straight in the PHP. Oh my god. Did, did, they booked us for two days training, did one day training, said, sorry, we can't take any more money off you. Yeah. The only thing you can do with this is win it. Yeah. Oh, but they didn't come down. <laughs> <laughs> any others? Yeah, the, um, I might get set upon it, the room is full of superstars here. But that, that sort of analogy you've got there, players and superstars, do you think sort of to be a superstar as you term it, you sort of have to go through that, that player sort of zone? The, the reason being, obviously, it's a lot of what you said there is quite familiar because I'm quite new to drink. Yeah. Um, there's, there's things you have specific examples about putting the HP code in blocks, that sort of thing. But, um, you know, I've done that, I've seen other people doing that. Yeah. What's the, the sort of the other path, or is there one, or do you have to go through being a, a player? <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got all the um, the pre hooks that you can use in your in your modules, but you've also, if for instance you want to do it in a view, then you can use a views pre render hook, and that way you can get into the header or whatever element inside the view. Um, with a block, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't put PHP straight into a block, not ever. Um, I'd either create a custom block, or I'd um, yeah, I'd create a custom block because then you can pull your code now. Or if you use panels and create a custom paint, and do it that way. I'm just thinking that to, to learn all of those correct, more correct ways to yeah. do things, obviously, it takes time. Yeah, it takes time. Yeah, it you does. don't know that to begin with. Yeah. You, just, you just don't have access to that knowledge, exactly. especially if you're sort of working through drink or on your own is a bit of a, an initiative to get on board with it. And yeah. so from my perspective, it's, it's very difficult to sort of jump. Straight into that, mm. all of those, those circles you have in all of those different areas. Yeah. Looking forward to learning them, but obviously it's just a lot to, yeah. a lot to take. Well, in Drupal 8, you'll be able to do any PHP, so. Uh, exactly. Oh, yeah, another Drupal player is um, they don't know version control and they just edit straight on the live server. And then when you're trying to deploy via your version control, it. Um, Kills it. Yeah. Any other, anyone's got any player examples that they've uh, come across? Uh, we had a guy recently uh, where we had a client and we were doing things the Drupal way, and for the client it wasn't going fast enough. Yeah. They just we 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 did development push production where it was like we just want things to work. So they hired a PHP guy, unbeknown to us, to work on a separate feature. When it came to pushing this feature to live, we obviously they had to obviously come through us. Yeah. And I looked at the code, and it was mind-boggling because it was not a standard player. Mm. This person had learned to do panels, C tools, plugins, which took me a long time to work out how to do properly. Yeah. They managed to work that out. Yet they would still put custom queries in these C tools plugins and base them off fields and values that don't even exist on the live site. <laughs> <laughs> so rather than using views, which is, if you can work out CTOOLS plugins, views is not that hard. No. They just wrote custom queries and then built these templates out of these queries and essentially built views from scratch inside CTOOLS oh, plugins. Oh, yeah. They've reinvented the wheel, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
that's a good example of a PHP developer coming to Drupal. They, yeah. they don't know who's an just incredibly talented developer, very well commented code, yeah. very clear code, just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we have to remember that it's actually the Drupal community is fault that that happens as much as that happens mm. in the sense of the documentation they use to come to know yeah. this is not how we do things on in a simple clear place. So yeah. Okay, that's not. You got you got the code in Stanford, and there should be a page of the right and the wrong way. Exactly. I think right. I think all the stuff you said there should be you know there yeah. should be a page that says you don't put this, you don't do this, you don't yeah. do that. I think to be fair, there is a lot of that there. That's what I was going to say. There really is. is. I think hell of a lot of documentation there, yeah. and training. But it's not easy to find. And yeah. not really no, easy and I think this is what Lewis was talking about yesterday when he was talking about the, the structure of how, you know, for the design standards, we should do something possibly for Drupal development standards. It's development standards, not coding standards. Because they're, yeah. they're good and they work yeah. and coders can easily find them. But the development standards are not mm. very good. There's not a kind of central place where you can yeah. I think a lot of agencies offshore especially, they're going to struggle when Drupal waits out because it's a whole different ballgame and also no PHP and Drupal back end so you're going to find them a lot, yeah. they'll find another way to hack in. <laughs> Just copy all the classes. There's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a lot of talk about and um, you know, like, obviously there's like 20,000 different ways to do everything but the, one, the conversations I like with yeah. So you can have like, well, this is, you know, you have a badge and like, well, this is how our company does panels and stuff. And there's always, you know, there's never like a right way to do anything. I think there's lots of right ways to do it, and that's not yeah. one right way to yeah. They, they did, um, um, at DrupalCon London, they did this 50 ways to write a module at the song. Yeah. And there is 50 ways to write a module. <laughs> so, but, you know, whether it's the right way or the wrong way. But. Is, it, is it that you find out that the what the appropriate and accepted standards are not necessarily from reading on the website but actually being at things like this yeah and definitely. it's talking to it's the people in this room well and yeah find out how yeah because we're I'm pretty sure everyone here is a developer are they uh, yeah they touch code so what's the best approach for us you know we we don't want to waste hours in a day looking for code when it should just be right there in front of us so maybe it's one of the big choices when you're looking for a superstar is that they are active in the community yeah. and are able to get out up, up from their desk mm. just as much as the quality of code that they can produce. Yeah, yeah. It's who they're talking to <coughs> matters yeah. so much. Yeah. And the way you structure your modules out, so for instance, this rescue project, they just did features but they just whacked it in modules. So we didn't have a clue that there's any feature. This is in um, the the core modules folder. So they whacked all oh. their <laughs> yeah. So we didn't know, but you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> when you started out. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's, an, it's a way that we need to. We want to work as fast as possible and get. Yeah, you know, we want to make as much money as possible, but make our work as good as possible in as less time. Pretty much. Cool. All right. And finally, I am uh, running 250 miles over 125 days for charity for PC Nicola Hughes um, Memorial Fund. Uh, basically, I'm a special constable of Surrey Police. I've been there for nearly five years, and it's quite um, important to me that we're doing it as a force. There's ten of us doing it actually, but um, it's when someone gets killed as a police officer, it really hits home. Um, so the money's raising money for the victim support, which um, is for anyone who experiences um, crime. So if you've um, been burgled or something similar, then you've probably had victim support or you've um, had contact with that. Care of police survivors, um, Northwest Police Fender for the Fund. Um, yeah, so I'm starting out on the 1st of December, two miles a day, and uh, 125 days, so yeah, sponsor me, that's it. <laughs>